No, God, please, no, 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 no! All right, hello, Riven Mains and Yasuo Mains alike. I am the Nightwing, Way of Life Esports, coming at you guys with another League of Legends video. So, today we are going to be talking about Cloud9. It only feels like just yesterday that I saw them at the 2014 World Championship, and I instantly fell in love with them. And here I am, six years later, still their fan and still going strong, hoping that we can finally get that title that we've so longed for ever since not getting any new titles since spring of summer 2014. It's been quite the long time since Cloud9 has won a NALCS title, but they have been close before t versus TSM in the 2016 summer and 2017 spring finals. Then you also have, they almost got a title this past year in 2019 when they took TL to game five and they just came up short when in reality, and about what's game four, they threw game four, and then at that point, you kind of know they're not going to win the series, and they were also a team that had a lot of charisma, a lot of swag, they had the OG players of Balls, Medios High, Sneaky, and Elimination, and then later on, throughout a lot of their iterations, they finally started to make changes, and I think a lot of the Cloud9 fans don't really understand this, is that they were already doing this. It just, the sneaky hit, which I'll cover in a little bit here, took a bigger type of effect than the other members do. And I don't really understand that because you'd think that a lot of the fans would be more or less so not happy with every single other member constantly moving off the team anyway. If you look at the Cloud9 roster besides Sneaky, all of the OG members were off at least by 2017 anyway, it was just sneaky starting at that point, but you never really got that type of reaction the community got because of, obviously, it was a lot different time back then, there was a lot less, you know, more of what you didn't know about the scene, we didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes and how teams run, how teams operated, and, you know, what was their goals for various splits, and we just didn't know that because there wasn't really a lot of league content to really, you know, generate you know, enough of that level to where a point where a lot of teams were able to put that level of content out. The level of league content back then was actually pretty lower compared to what it is now, obviously. Now, a lot of teams have their own specific series like TSM Legends, Cloud9 had Cloud9 Genesis. If you were a fan where when Cloud9 had Cloud9 Genesis, man, that shit was lit. But that's how we got to see all these different new iterations of Cloud9, and we got to see Cloud9 grow throughout many of the years, and I'm going to start breaking it down for you, and I'll get to every single point and even tackle those stupid delusional people out there, and I'll get to them in a little bit there, but I'm just going to say right now, if you are extremely sensitive, I really wouldn't watch this video, because I'm going to just go in, like I said before, I'm a real person, I have real opinions, and I'm not some sugarcoating, you know, pussy loser, who where I'm just like so delusional in my brain, that I can accept reality i'm not like that so if you are sensitive stop watching i i don't want to hear complaints i don't really want to hear that shit but i'm gonna get it anyway and if you try to i'm gonna just destroy you but it's okay let's start so the it, let's just tackle the identity point so the identity point in cloud nine is memes happy go lucky uh having fun and basically they're okay with being second now to a certain extent, that is a very good thing. You want to create a good atmosphere. You want to be happy. You want to ensure your players are having fun. Those are all great things. Being memers, whatever. Everybody creates memes nowadays. Kids, teenagers, adults, you know, people in businesses create memes. That's perfectly fine. But at one core point, Cloud9 needed to realize something. All of that doesn't translate into winning. And that's the biggest thing that fans don't understand. This is a business. Winning is everything. And it's something that if you guys watch the Teen Titans uh, animated series way back in the day when it aired on Cartoon Network, there was this episode with Robin and he had an issue with losing and winning. And th there was a quote he said, and I remember it to this day because I love that episode. It's one of my favorite episodes in the entire show. Winning isn't... all. 
winning isn't the only thing, but it's the only thing that matters. And still to this day, that proves true. Winning is the only thing that matters. Yes, Cloud9 has gotten pretty much, let's say, second to lowest, like, fifth place in various splits. You know, they what, they got, like, fifth place in that 12018 spring split. They were kind of already dead in the water by the end of that split. They were all, like, just crashing and burning anyway. But most of the time, C9 is at the top of the table for the LCS. Or, no, sorry, the second, the other, other split, the 2015 summer split, they were actually, you know, they didn't even make playoffs. So, it's been like two splits where they've, you know, pretty much not, you know, been at the top. But two splits out of, like, since 2013, like, that's almost 10 splits right there. If they're doing bad in two splits out of, like, the other, like, 12, I don't really see that as a problem. But this is the issue is that, Nothing since those very few splits when they first came in translated into any titles. And you have to factor in, from an org perspective, that is going to start to, to start to take a toll. So, let me explain this to you. Businesses want to obviously reach higher highs than other businesses. They want to be known as the best. And they want to be known as the, you know, biggest dog on the playground. Like when you were a little kid. Who's the biggest man on the campus? That is what orgs want. That is what that is what basically every team in the LCS wants. They want to be the big man on campus, like TL, like TSM, like Cloud9 in the past. But Cloud9 have not been the big guy for a very long time. And you can say that for the regular split and various playoffs, but winning, winning titles matters. And that's the only thing that matters. And at a certain point, every single year started to rack up. Well, C9's not winning anything. Okay, now it's 2016. They haven't won anything. Now it's 2017. Oh, Jensen, he didn't press his hourglass. Now he didn't win that title. All right. No, no titles in 2018. But the top four at Worlds and the crazy summer split they had kind of made up for that. So I'll let that summer split where top four at Worlds go. I'll let that go. 2019 goes by. Well, no titles. And at this point, Cloud9 doesn't even make it out of groups the second time when they were the only team the only in 18 to gather groups the second time it happens, and it happens in Europe. Now, I don't really understand why it happens in Europe consistently as it did for both times. They've actually explained it before. It's not really their fault. It's how they kind of boot camped in Europe, and it just wasn't the level of quality as the um, Asia or the, as basically the Asian solo queue, you know, the Korean solo queue that I talked about. So that's probably an org misstep as the reason why they don't get out of groups in U EU. Jax explained it, Sneaky and a lot of the other players said it, and this was the same things they said back in 2015. So I'll take that for what it is. If it's the solo queue that is not up to standard in EU and they thought it was up to standard going into that, that's understandable. Hey, we all make mistakes in our life. Nobody's perfect, right? But do you understand what I just said? 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, I'll, I'll, I'll give a pass, right? 2019. Okay, so if, if you want to count 2018, that's five years without winning any titles. All right, so that's five years, right? How many splits is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That is twelve titles all gone. Yes, they had points to win titles. I understand that. They got to game five against TSM in the spring 2017 finals. You know, they were in the finals against TSM that previous split for that summer 2016. And then they got to the finals against TL in 2018. And then TL in the summer finals, you know, of this last pass split. It doesn't matter. They didn't win. That's the point. That's what I'm trying to drive at you guys. Is that you have to win. That's the thing, though. I don't give a rat's flying furry asshole about how you got to the playoffs, how you made your miraculous run. What you did during the playoffs. Because at a certain point, it really doesn't matter. All people are going to remember is you winning. Why do people remember their semi-final at Worlds appearance at Worlds 2018? Because they won consistently pretty much all the way up until that point. Dropping like what? Maybe like six games altogether? That's why that's a good, you know, blemish on them. As an org, obviously. So, let's start diving into that a little bit more. So... Right after that, you haven't won any titles in like, like let's say seven, like five years, right? So that has to obviously come from Jack's perspective. Like, okay, we have literally just not been winning. What are we doing to not win? Are we not switching out players? Are we not trying new things? Because you started to notice that. High, high ends up getting kicked for Jensen. 
Uh, they end up finally getting a newer jungler after Meteos. Uh, they had contracts, and then obviously after that, they had Sven Scaren when they took her from TSM. After he got kicked from TSM, and then, okay, do we need a new support after Elimination? We had Smoothie. I thought Smoothie was really, really good with Sneaky. I thought they were a pretty good bot lane. Uh, and then you get Zazel after that. So Cloud9's personal problem at the beginning was always switching out players. Like, we constantly kept the same players. And, you know, at a certain point, you have to get new players. I know people like the OG C9 vibe, but here's the issue with that. And this is what people who just watch esports don't understand. I come from a traditional sports background. Eagles, Dodgers, LA Lakers all day, baby. And LA Lakers are going to win the title this year for the NBA. Don't at me. But look at what I'm saying here. Is that you cannot be afraid to change players. Every single org in existence in the traditional sports scene from the NHL, the NBA, the NFL, the Major League Baseball, or, you know, or no, because tennis and golf are more, more, more like solo sports. Oh, soccer, soccer. Those orgs all change players, even Europe, when they have their traditional sports, or Korea, or Turkey, or whatever, they have traditional sports, they change players. Every single time. Fans just understand, okay, we've had this guy for so long, he wants to move on, it's fine, that's how life goes. Lakers did the had to go through the exact same transition. The Lakers, at one point, were pretty much... People only knew them for being Kobe Bryant. You had all oh, that all-star lineup of Kobe Bryant, Gasol, all the Le Le legacy players for Lakers. You guys know the legacy players if you watch the Lakers for as long as I have. You know, Andrew Bynum, just, oh my god, man, that shit was fire. David Fisher, whoo, man, that shit was lit. But at a certain point, the Lakers had to grow past Kobe Bryant. And that all breeds into this situation. People need to understand the perception of what you think a, a team is is what they put out there. Yes. But that's up to you to decide what that perception of that team actually is. So that's like when I say that I'm a real person. Obviously, I'm a real person. I'm not I'm not a fake human being. I'm real in the way that my opinions don't come off like some soy boy cuck. I'm not sugarcoating anything. I don't do that. I don't even do that in my own personal life. Why would I do that for you guys? That, that would be fake of me, right? Okay, follow what I'm saying. So let's dial this all to sneaky now. I'm not giving any unjustified blame to him. He did play badly in the summer split. You can go back and watch me and JTH's um all NALCS pro team for spring. We put Sneaky over double lift. People thought we were stupid. People literally thought we were stupid. I thought he played better than double lift. So people can't say I don't like him. I literally like him as a dude. I've met him before. We've actually talked. I like the dude. But he played badly in summer. Okay, he's been really consistent all of his career. Pretty much top three, top four ADC. That's really good. That's perfectly fine. But this is the issue, and this comes with it while having an o being an OGC9 fan. At a certain point, you know, I'll talk about all that licorice stuff in just a moment, but I'll bring it up right now to, you know, further illustrate my point. Eventually, he was going to go. Whether it happened this year, next year, Five years from now, eventually, he was going to go. Whether you choose to believe that or not is inconsequential. Reason being, because orgs want to see where they can improve on. It It's really good that he's been consistent. It's really great he's been consistent. Perfectly fine. Orgs don't see it that way. Orgs want to win. And this is the issue. They switched out every single player besides him. Every single player. And I'm not saying he, it was all his fault. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that it was time for a change. People who have been a fan of this team for so long want the same person over and over and over again. Every single NA org has most likely tried out a different AD carry at a certain point. Even the ones that don't even exist in the league anymore have all tried out a different ADC. Why can't we do that? I don't care about what you felt seven years ago. That's per... Because that's your own personal preference of what you choose to feel. That's your own feeling. And remember, orgs and business don't care about your feelings. That's the problem. No one cares about your feelings. That's just, that's just stupid. So if orgs did stuff off feelings, we wouldn't even have or we, we, we wouldn't even, <laughs> let's be honest here, guys. If orgs cared about, you know, fans' feelings, we wouldn't get teams like TL. Because people say stupid things about TL. TL's a great team, let's be honest here. But people say, I don't like TL because TL don't bring up talent. Blah, 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 blah. 
it's not TL's job to bring up talent. That's a league issue. What TL want? I respect TL. They want to win. I respect that. Why do you think I'm a fan of G2? I like G2 for their, you know, I like perks and caps. I love, I love everything about G2. Everything about G2, I love all the things about Cloud9 I love. That's why I'm both their fan. But the reason I love G2 is because they know how to have fun and win. That's the difference between why Cloud9 and G2 will never be on the same landscape, landscape in any other iterations of any roster they have until they finally get this point. You can still have fun and you can still win. Now, I know people say the whole Jack thing where he likes to buy inexpensive talent and then raise them up. That's perfectly fine. I like that they do that. That's a great thing that helps out the uh, league in general. The way that, you know, you know, Riot has just not been helping. That's perfectly fine. But keep those players in Academy. Then when Academy does get big, he can still sell those players off. And he likes to try them out, you know, once in a while and look at their shot. That's perfectly fine. If they're really that good, when they get those two or three shots on the stage, if they don't play well, that's their problem. It, that, that, that shouldn't be a team-wide issue. I don't understand that. When p a, per a new person gets their first shot at the league, and they go, oh, he didn't play too well because his team didn't help him. No, 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 no. That's what, what people's problems are. You keep worrying about someone that's not you. Stop worrying about what other people are doing. Worry about yourself. And I know in a team atmosphere... That has to be all obviously, you know, changed up to a certain extent, but you must understand, at a certain point, you need to worry about yourself, and you need to worry about how well you're doing, and that's the thing, Cloud9 has always been worried about what everybody else is doing in their offseason, and what they've been planning on doing, instead of worrying about themselves, and that's the issue, it's like, I don't really care what happened with Licorice, what happened with Svenskaren, what happened with Jensen, or Blabber, or Zazel, or none of those people, I don't care what's happened throughout these whole... Seven years we've been following Cloud9, essentially. Well, me six, generally seven, since I've had to go back and watch their, you know, spring and summer split wins, and when they came in and were 25 and 3. All that really doesn't matter, though. Do you want to know why? Because for a good month... So they won two titles, right? So if I'm going for percents out of 100, and you've won two titles, let, let's say those titles are worth, like... Let's go, give or take, 10%, right? That's been a lot. It's been a long time, right? That's like 70%, that's like basically 70% 70, 70 of their uh, legacy in league in the in the NALCS has mounted to pretty much nothing. Like, just be honest here. Like, you can't sugarcoat stuff like that. You just have to be like, a good majority of their time in the league has not amounted to anything since they've only won so little. TSM's won like 7, TL's won like 4, you know what I mean? Like, CLG's won 2, but, you know, they're for another discussion video that I'll never do actually because... Well, I'm not their fan, and I don't really personally care. But, you know what I mean? I want them to do well. And it's time for a change. He was, Sneaky was eventually going to leave anyway. Whether or not it was a org thing, whether or not it was a him, I'm just quitting thing. So, let's just, I'll just use this argument. Because I've actually thought about this today. Thought about it long and hard. So, if you're going to try and uh, debate, you better bring some real core good opinions. I want to hear I feel and all this shit. I'll, I'm done with that I feel crap. Alright. So, what if he, after Worlds, they got knocked out, he was like, hey, Jack, I'm done. I'm done. And then Cloud9 get all these new players. Falcon, Sven, obviously, Blabber, new jungler, and, and whatever, right? What if he just said that? The reaction would still be the same. I think it would be still, because people are just not smart, and they don't understand change needs to happen. If you're not winning consistently, you need to change something. I don't care who it is. It could have been... You know, freaking licorice for all I care. Like, you, 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 bye, goodbye. New players in. See, people love. Remember to rag about Misfits, Misfits from uh, EU. So, for most NA fans, are probably not going to know this, but Misfits last year built a super team. I respect them for doing that. I don't respect what they did with the players because that was just mm, kind of shady. But, 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 uh, I respect them for building a super team and at least trying. I will, res I love Cloud9, obviously. You guys know that. But they need to win now. It's I I'm, I'm sick of hearing that. Like go lucky, happy means fuck all that. What does what does that mean? This dude told me. Well, they got to game five against TL in the NALCS finals. Yep, yep, yep. All right, did they win? All right, no. D argument done. Did they win? Argument done. That's it. You have to win at one point. And the issue of changing out Zen with Blabber. You know, to be honest. Going on Cloud9, you're going to have to eventually realize that you're going to probably get switched out with somebody eventually. That's just how orgs run. That's how sports, that's how even traditional sports work. And they have, like, 50 people on their rosters. Like, 
we have to deal with like 10 here. I'm glad for that. But, you know, change happens. Change is needed. Let's look at all the great teams that you guys know and love that change up the roster. IG changed the roster every single year. And eventually that one time they changed it, they won Worlds. FPX were in the league for like two splits, changed their roster like once, won Worlds. Fnatic changes the roster constantly. Every single year they change it. Yeah, every single year they've changed their roster. I can't remember one time where they've pretty much kept the exact same roster. World Finals, they almost beat SKT, SKT 2015 SKT at MSI. I'll give you another, I, wait, that's three examples? Oh, I got more. G2, they won a bunch, a bunch of titles in the EU, right? They get Trash Yarnin and Trash Wadid. They don't win anything. Spring Finals, whatever, right? Top four worlds, all right, cool, you know. No titles. Goodbye, Trash. Goodbye, Trash. Super Team next year. MSI title. Both spring and summer reclaim the glory. There you go. That's G2, Fnatic, IG, NetPX. SKT changed their roster almost every single year. Minus maybe one player. They've won how many times? How many world championships? They literally made one change one year and then won worlds the next. So you're telling me that all these better orgs than Cloud9 can do that and win consistently. With Cloud9 can't because you want to keep your little OG C9 vibe. What the hell is that? Yeah, I get nostalgia from looking at them when they were like in 2013, 2014. Yeah, but I realized that I got to move on, bro. Life moves on. Like, you know how in Naruto Shippuden, where like years start piling on? We're at Boruto now. Boruto's trash. But I got to accept, hey, this is not Naruto anymore. I got to move on. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, though, is that you just gotta move on. Cloud9 needs to establish a new identity that is about winning. You know, if if there's a different C9 vibe, you know, whatever. We've had the same C9 vibe for, like, seven years. Why don't you want something new? I don't really care about what you feel. That's stupid. So, your feelings do not translate to wins. I'm just saying, yeah, that is really what that means. So, that's it. And, you know, I'm glad I got a chance to make this video. There's a lot of stuff piling up because people said I hate these players and like clearly talked to these players and took pictures with them. I clearly do not hate these players. Like, are you actually stupid? But, you know what I mean? You have to be willing to elevate your life at certain points. If something is not, you, you can try the, see, this is the definition of insanity. Textbook definition of it. Trying the same things multiple times, expecting different results. We have tried the same stuff for, I don't know how long. Has it worked out? No. This goes for Reaper too. Oh, you thought I was going to leave out Reaper, did you? If Reaper does not give any titles to this team in 2020, I kind of want him gone at this point. Hey, I want change. I personally want change. I advocate for change. You know what I mean? I'll just sit around in my own personal life just doing the exact same thing over and over again, expecting a different result every single time. That's just me personally. And if you choose to believe whatever you choose to believe, that's your opinion. But get this, just because, it, just because it's your opinion doesn't mean, mean it's right. And it also does, doesn't mean you're even accurately looking at something distinctively. You need to understand, these guys, at the end of the day, all these five players that hit the rift want to win the game. And I, and, I, and I understand, certain circumstances pan out a way where, you know, they don't win finals or whatever. But that is just not going to matter. People will only remember it as you losing and the other team as a winner. You know what I mean? You can tell. Right after they lost group stages here, they were devastated. You could look at their faces. Do you want to feel that again? You want to feel that again? It only happened twice. But that second time hurt real bad, didn't it? It hurt real bad. It hurt me too. I was like, damn, we're not making out of groups this year. That kind of sucks though. That kind of sucks though, doesn't it? You want to feel that again? Keep keep the same roster. They wanted, called Cloud9 wanted to not feel that. I respect that. Because they wanted to not feel that again. Because that sucks. They wanted to possibly win a, a title again. Because they saw they lost to TL. They're like, we need change. Because people in an atmosphere think that, oh man, I want to keep the same player forever. At one point, he had to leave anyway. All these guys eventually had to leave. Whether it's Blabber, High, Contract, Zazel, Smoothie, Sneaky. You know what I mean? All these players at one point had to leave. Like, it, nothing stays the same forever. That's how it works. <sighs> That's it, guys. See you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. I'm the Nightwing, and Way of Life Esports is signing out.